The embryonic mesonephros really work as an excretory organ. So in a cross section through the embryonic body, we would see this pilot cord, the notochord, and the dorsal aorta. The dorsal aorta has uh, segmentally uh, arranged bra lateral branches to the, to the mesonephros. Each of these arterioles ends with a capillary loop. Uh, it's called the glomerulus. It's similar to the glomerulus from the final kidney. And the, the blood is filtered into primitive capsules and uh, microscopic uh, tubules that drain the urine into the mesonephric duct. So on both sides of the human body we got the mesonephric tubules and the mesonephric duct. Here there is the gut tube and the coelom cavity, the dorsal mesentery, ventral mesentery, etc. But the dorsal wall of the of the uh, coelom cavity, here the mesoderm is proliferating and thickening, forming a structure called the genital ridge which will uh, give rise to the gonads. We'll come to that uh, fact later. So if this is this is the spinal cord, the notochord, and the dorsal aorta, the dorsal aorta has uh, segmental branches, lateral segmental branches. To the, to the segmentally arranged components of the mesonephros. Each of these branch ends with a capillary, with a loop of capillaries. called glomerulus and the urine is uh, carried by this uh, uh, tubules into the mesonephric duct. The same on the other side. This is the coelom cavity and the mesoderm on the on its dorsal wall is thickened in a, a structure called the genital ridge that will be the source of the epithelium of gonads. Now if this is the cross section how does the frontal view look like of the same of the same uh, structure? This would be the aorta, the dorsal aorta, it has the segmentally arranged lateral branches to the mesonephros. Mesonephros is a large and long organ and we got the capillary loops on the end, the glomeruli, and the, bl uh, the urine is filtered into the mesonephric tubules, the microscopic mesonephric tubules, and the urine is then collected 
by the left and right mesonephric duct. So this will be the mesonephric duct. We know that we already know that it has a in the sac sacral region it has a ureteric butt branching here for the final kidney for the metanephros, but then it it enters the cloaca. So it collects the urine from the embryonic mesonephros. And the situation on the other side is symmetrical. Just in a, as a scheme. And this would be the cloaca. Temporarily closed by the cloacal membrane, but it will break down. So this is the dorsal aorta. This one on a cross section. This is a frontal view, right? These are the segmental arteries. To the mesonephros, the mesonephric tubules, repeating mesonephric tubules, and the urine is drained by the mesonephric duct. or Wolfian duct that has the ureteric butt of the metanephros, the final kidney, and the, uh, the mesonephric duct enters the cloaca lined with the endoderm. Now what happens with, with this mesonephros? The upper part of the mesonephros disappears. And I'm discussing only the condition in the male embryos. Because in female embryos all the mesonephros usually disappears and so does the, mes the mesonephric duct. Yeah? But in, in uh, male embryos the cranial part of the mesonephros is reduced it disappears while the 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 caudal portion of course in male uh, only the caudal part uh, it transforms into the head of epididymis and these microscopic canals they will become the efferent efferent ductules of testis they will join the right testis of, uh, and uh, the efferent ductus of testis can be found in the head of the epididymis. What becomes out of the Wolfian duct? In male embryos, uh, it becomes the excretory passages of the of the genital system. So the epididymic duct. the deferent duct and the ejaculatory duct.
Now to proceed further, we need to explain what happens with the cloaca because it does not stay like this. In a such as a section, we would see the situation before the cloaca is divided and after. So before it's divided, we got the cloaca here, we got the allantois going towards the umbilicus, and we got the rest of the hind gut. Here will be the temporary cloacal membrane, and the, the Meso the mesonephric duct with the ureteric butt of the metonephros, etc. Now what happens here that the population of mesenchyma proliferates here and it will divide the cloaca with a septum into two parts. So if this is the cloaca before it's divided and this is the allantois. Uh, this is the uh, wolf, uh, wolfian duct. With a metanephros or the ureteric butt. Then this is proliferation of uh, the urorectal septum. Of the urorectal septum. And this is an embryonic structure that divides the cloaca into two parts. The cloaca becomes divided, therefore, by the septum. Into a more ventral part called urogenital sinus. And a more dorsal part called the anorectal panel. So after this division it looks like this. We got the umbilical cord and then there is a genital tubercle. Then there is the ventral part of the former cloaca which is called the original sinus. It's sending the Allantois into the umbilicus, and this is the origin, urogenital sinus. It receives the uh, mesonephric duct. A new structure appears here, namely the perineum, and then we got the dorsal part. That's the anor of the former cloaca. That's the anorectal canal. So we got the uh, genital tubercle, this is in both male and female embryos. Yes, this is still an indifferent stage, and this become the part one, the original sinus, that receives the opening of the mesonephric duct. This is the allantois. 
uh, growing uh, in the direction towards the umbilicus. And the second part becomes the anorectal canal. formed by the rectum and the anus. The cloacal membrane is no more present and we got a new structure here, the perineum. This will be the metanephros. Uh, so, yeah? the kidney. The allantois actually becomes uh, part of the urinal bladder and the uracus, but we will explain that on a separate scheme.